you're not fooling around with some other guy, you cheater. Worthless woman. With his face turning bright red and spittle flying, my husband hurled insults at me. We're getting divorced right now. Both of you get out of this house immediately. The volume and aggression in his voice filled me with a profound sense of disgust. And I couldn't help but close my eyes. There had been misunderstandings between us due to poor relations with his family. But I never expected him to lash out in such a vile manner. Moreover, his accusations were baseless. There's no way I could cheat. The cause of this situation was the result of our daughter's blood test. Both my husband and I have type O blood. Making it impossible for our child to have anything but type O. However, our daughter's blood type turned out to be A. Upon hearing this, my husband's complexion changed. And he jumped to the conclusion that I had been unfaithful, blaming me without hearing my side. I would never cheat. But since this is puzzling, let's find out why. Let's do a DNA test. As I said this, my husband looked down on me with a smug expression. Yeah, go ahead. It'll just prove your infidelity. Just you wait and strangle yourself with your own actions. Once he's made up his mind, he refuses to budge. With that, he happily provided a sample of his hair for the test. Two weeks later, when the DNA test results arrived, I showed them to my still doubtful husband. As he stared at the document, his eyes slowly widened. And the anger in his brows turned to confusion and anxiety. This can't be. What's going on? Looking directly at my trembling husband, I stated plainly. I don't know. But you wanted a divorce, so I'll proceed with it. And, I will discuss this matter with your parents. Surely, the truth will come out. My name is Julia. I am 28 years old and work for a company that deals in household goods. Specifically in the HR department. Nathan and I met through a friend at a drinking party. He runs a technical business with his parents. The reason I married him was because of his carefree nature which was a source of comfort amidst the stress of my organizational work. Even after marriage, we got along well, but his family was a constant source of worry. My in-laws believed that once a woman marries, she should join her husband's family home. But I want to continue my career even after marriage. We don't see eye to eye on this, and every time we meet, they make sarcastic remarks. Are you still working? It's disgraceful for a woman to be out and about. Quit your job and help out at home as a wife should. This complaint, frequently voiced during her calls to our home, was a significant stressor, especially on my precious days off. I am quite fond of my job, recently taking on the responsibility of selecting new recruits. I look forward to advancing my career. The relationships at work are positive, and despite the challenges, I rarely have unpleasant experiences. My desire to continue working isn't solely about income, I genuinely wish to maintain my career. You should say something too. When Nathan's mother, Susan, directed her comments at my husband, he seemed non-committal but respected my wishes. If she wants to keep working, let her be. Dad's still healthy, and it's not like I'm taking over right away. Let her have her way with household matters. Hearing this, Susan narrowed her eyes in irritation and clicked her tongue. You've turned into a son who talks back. Living together is obviously better. Honestly, I don't know what that wife of yours has told you. Faced with such remarks, my husband would sigh heavily, seemingly overwhelmed by the hassle. Besides, even if you helped out, it wouldn't instantly boost our sales. It's better financially if you work and we increase our income that way. That's more helpful to us. Hearing this, I couldn't deny feeling a bit disappointed. Wondering if he only cared about the income or wishing for more affectionate words. However, I appreciated that he was supportive of the lifestyle I desired. 
I decided to overlook my feelings and thank him for his support. Yet, such exchanges, continuing over months, half a year, and then a year, couldn't stay the same. Susan persistently demanded we live together and that I quit my job. It seemed she was firmly attached to this idea, unwilling to compromise. Her dissatisfaction boiled over to the point where she said. It's absurd how obsessed you are with working outside. What are you after? Men. Yes, that must be it. While you have a husband, you're mooning over men at work. Disgusting. Calming her down when she became hysterical was a challenge. Requiring coffee and sweets to placate her. Of course, my husband never believed her wild accusations. However, he seemed to grow tired of Susan's frequent outbursts and accusations. And he stopped supporting me as he used to. If it's going to upset mom this much, maybe we should just give in? It's stressful for Julia to be yelled at like this every time. Besides, I'll be taking over the business eventually. It might be quicker to just quit your job and move in with us. My husband, sitting at the dining table, murmured with his head down. He finished speaking and then covered his face with his hands, sighing deeply. I understood his struggle, caught between his mother and me. But I was shocked to feel his support slipping away. Why? Why would you say that? I stopped washing dishes and appealed to him with a tearful voice. Why? You see how mom is. I'm tired of being attacked by her for continuing our current lifestyle. And you must be tired too, right? After repeating the same thing for a year. Do you still want to work? Indeed, I was at my limit with Susan's escalating insults and vitriol. But my job was an essential part of my life that I didn't want to give up. Moreover, considering her personality, living together might just lead to further bullying. Yes, but, you're her son, right? I want you to convince her. You said it's beneficial for us if I work because it increases our income. Don't give in to your mother. And there's no guarantee that living together will solve everything. Tears welled in my eyes, but I clenched my fists tight, shaking with anger at his betrayal. Then my husband, frustrated, slammed the newspaper on the table and stood up abruptly. Enough. That was ages ago. Clinging to the same idea doesn't always work out. You're stubborn and selfish. Wait. You can't just say what suits you at the time and then flip your stance when it's inconvenient. That's dishonest. I firmly responded as he attempted to leave. Our interaction ended like an argument that day, leaving me exhausted. I couldn't finish cleaning up and went straight to bed, overwhelmed by the situation. Why did it come to this? Susan's behavior was problematic, but my husband's changing attitude hurt me deeply. If he drifted away, I felt utterly alone. Facing this alone, without any support, was incredibly disheartening. However, our relationship, strained from that fight, took a turn when I discovered I was pregnant weeks later. After feeling unwell for days and being urged by coworkers to see a doctor, I learned I was two months pregnant. This news delighted my husband, and he began to take extra care of me during the pregnancy. If it's a boy, will he be my successor? If it's a girl, I hope she's as cute as you. You're working and doing house chores now, but this is an important time. You don't have to overdo it. Touched by his kind words. I was about to feel comforted when he carelessly mentioned the very thing I didn't want to hear. How about quitting your job now that you're pregnant? It'll be less strain on your body during pregnancy, and it's a good opportunity. If we live with my parents, my mom can take care of the housework, so you can rest. At that moment, my head felt like it was boiling with anger. Had he forgotten all the discussions and arguments we had? I was astounded he could say such a thing so casually and with a smile. Don't be so thoughtless. 
This isn't a good opportunity. It's like you're using the baby we're fortunate to have as an excuse. To force me into following your family's wishes. We didn't have this child with that intention. I'm not quitting my job. When I burst out with this, my husband looked troubled as if he was overwhelmed. Relax. Why are you so angry? It's common for people to quit their jobs when they get pregnant. It might be common, but my company has a good maternity and paternity leave system. I plan to take maternity leave and then return to work once things settle down. Plus, if I quit now, we'll lose all the income during the leave. My husband listened to my explanation half-heartedly at first, but perked up towards the end, especially at the mention of money. I see. Maybe it's okay to resign after the maternity leave ends. Let's just take the leave for now, and we'll think about what to do after that. With an indifferent and careless tone, he diverted his gaze away from me. I couldn't help but sigh as I watched my husband casually turn on the TV. His profile betraying no concern. Before we were married, I hadn't realized how easily swayed and materialistic he was. From now on, I knew I had to be more assertive. Months later, I went back to my parents' house for the childbirth. I wanted to avoid any interaction with my in-laws and mother-in-law around the time of the birth. When I shared with my parents about Susan and my husband, they were very worried. And my mother was even angrier with him than I was. You can't trust someone who changes his words so easily. You shouldn't live with him. If this continues, you might even consider divorce. My mother was so frustrated with my husband that she spoke in a low, forceful voice while gripping a kitchen knife firmly as she cooked. Thank you. But he's not a bad person when his mother and his family aren't involved. Life will change once the baby is born, and I want to see how things go for a while. When I said that, my mother sighed worriedly. It's good you're patient, but you tend to keep too much to yourself. If it becomes too much, come straight to us, okay? Yes, I understand. Feeling my mother's strong love. I gave birth to a healthy baby girl a few months later and named her Mia. Even after giving birth, I stayed at my parents' house as much as possible. Avoiding a return to a place near my in-laws. Eventually, a year later, when I found a daycare for Mia and could return to work, I went back home. Nathan visited to see Mia a few times, but we never discussed living together or quitting my job. In fact, both of us seemed to avoid the topic. My mother never showed her anger in front of me as before, but pressed him quietly. Now that you have a child and your family is growing, please support Julia and the child properly. Upon returning to the home I shared with my husband. It was clear that neither Susan nor my husband had changed. Susan would barge into our home to see her grandchild and scold me, saying. Enough already. How can a woman who has even had a child continue working without living? With her husband's family? There's a limit to being obstinate. Meanwhile, my husband would just brush everything off with nonchalant remarks like. Well, parenting comes with its challenges, and I'm sure things will work out eventually. Two years flew by, and Mia grew rapidly, now walking and talking on her own. I continued to work part-time and didn't live with my in-laws. My husband seemed to have grown too accustomed to both his mother's tirades and my appeals. Now ignoring our arguments and watching TV. I had no expectations of him anymore. I hope to convince them with my own strength someday. Then, one day, Mia fell ill with a rash all over her body, crying from discomfort. Recognizing the urgency, I took a day off work and rushed her to the clinic, where we requested the necessary blood tests. When asked about her blood type, I mentioned we didn't know yet, so they included that in the tests. I thought it unnecessary, but the doctor insisted, just in case. The diagnosis revealed the rash was due to atopic dermatitis, for which we received a prescription. While it was good to know the cause and treatment, 
The real issue was the blood type revealed by the test. I am type O, and so is my husband. Normally, we would only have a type O child. I reluctantly accepted the blood test, thinking it unnecessary since we already knew our types. However, the result left me feeling a chill. I returned home, troubled by the implications. When my husband came home, I solemnly showed him Mia's atopic diagnosis and then the blood type result. Don't you think it's strange? Both of us are type O, but Mia is type A? As I asked, my husband's complexion changed rapidly, and he raised his voice in anger. This means divorce. You must have been cheating at work. His furious outburst startled me. Wait, this is just a report. There might be a mistake in the test results. No way. Having a child with another man. My mother said you were obsessed with work because you had another man. Looks like she was right. Playing the career woman while fooling around, huh? What a disgrace. He continued to hurl insults at me, his voice loud and aggressive. I closed my eyes, feeling a deep revulsion at his words. It's sad to be misunderstood, and it's shocking to be subjected to such foul language. Stop that. How could you think I would cheat? You know I've been commuting between work and home every day. Don't you trust your wife? Trust? The test results say it all. He angrily slammed the paper with the test results, continuing his tirade. It seemed utterly impossible to communicate with him. I deeply regretted my choice of partner. I won't raise someone else's child. I don't even want to see the face of a child born from such a disgraceful woman. Get out of this house with her right now. And since you cheated, be prepared to pay compensation. His shouting filled the house, waking our daughter who started crying from the next room. She must be feeling so uncomfortable with her rash still not healed. Ignoring my distressed heart for our daughter, my husband forcibly pushed our belongings on us trying to kick us out on the spot. I hurriedly grabbed my valuables and the medicine prescribed by the doctor. Then, at the doorstep, I made one last plea to him. Please, listen to me. It's all so mysterious, and I want to get to the bottom of it. If it bothers you that much, let's do a DNA test. Hearing this, my husband looked down on me arrogantly. Fine, go ahead. It'll just prove your infidelity. Just strangle yourself with the truth. Once set on his belief, he seemed unyielding, even offering his hair for the test happily. Forcibly evicted, my daughter and I, with just the clothes on our back. Headed to my parents' house as a temporary refuge. Even after catching several express trains, it took us two hours to get there. And I was exhausted by the time we arrived. My mother was shocked at our appearance and furious when she heard the story. That's outrageous. Kicking you out based on assumptions is unacceptable. While the blood test results are peculiar, a husband and wife should work together to find the cause. Such a husband, we should return him to his parents. With those firm words, my mother gently applied medicine to my daughter, who was still uncomfortable from the rash. You must have been so scared, poor thing. Mia, you've done nothing wrong. I took some time off work and stayed at my parents, focusing on caring for my daughter. At the same time, we sent my husband's hair for DNA testing, waiting for the results. It was baffling, considering I hadn't been unfaithful, and the mystery of the blood type lingered. Unpleasant as the thought was, if my husband had been unfaithful, the child would be born to another woman, contrary to the current situation. After about two weeks and a few days, the DNA test results arrived. With my mother by my side, I slowly opened the document. It contained surprising information. Mia was undoubtedly our child, confirming I am type O. However, it turned out my husband's blood type was actually type A. 
With this truth in hand, I went back to the house I had been driven from. Leaving my daughter with my mother, anticipating potential conflict. What do you want now, you worthless woman? Though he received me coldly, I calmly showed him the test results. His expression slowly changed from anger to confusion and anxiety as he read them. This can't be. How is this possible? He had always claimed to be typo. A belief undoubtedly based on what he had been told since he was young. Staring directly at my trembling husband, I said plainly. We need to talk to your parents about this. Surely, they'll know the truth. To my surprise, he nodded. He had mentioned before that both his parents were supposedly typo. The possibility of a lie might be there. The tension and fear of uncovering a secret about his own birth seemed to shrink him. The man who had harshly insulted me was now like a different person altogether. When we went to his parents' house. My husband had apparently discussed our daughter's blood type and my supposed infidelity. And his mother's gaze was icy toward me. Why are you with this loose woman? Facing her disdain, my husband, with shaking hands, showed them the DNA test results. This isn't the time for accusations. Look at this. You both said my blood type was O. Why does it show as A? Susan slowly took it in and looked at it for a while with a stiff face. Then, she led us to the back room and had us sit on the cushions. Sitting in front of us, Susan was silent in a formal manner. It seemed like she had something difficult to say, as she bit her lip and looked down. Mom, why are you silent? Is there a reason? You're type O, dad is type O, so naturally, I should be type O as well. My husband was trying to be strong, but it was clear he was anxious. With his hands trembling under the table. Yes, but still. Susan's face turned pale, resembling a doll's, as she grimaced painfully and her lips. Turned purple, quivered. Come on, why won't you tell me? Tell me the truth. Noticing the state Susan was in, my husband didn't stop pressing her for answers. A few seconds of silence passed before Susan sighed quietly and slowly started to speak. There's something I've been silent about. Nathan, you are not actually the child of your father and me. At Susan's words, I gasped. What? Are you kidding? What do you mean? Naturally, my husband was greatly taken aback by this sudden revelation. Around the time I married your father, I had a careless affair with another man. You are the child from that time. Nathan, now 30, was visibly shaken by the revelation that the family he believed in was not his own. He was trembling visibly. Does dad know about this? Susan's pained expression alone gave away the answer. You've been hiding this from both dad and me. He was speechless, on the verge of tears, staring at Susan, who shed a single tear. Nathan, we raised you as our own child, dearly. She admitted to having an affair shortly after getting married, conceiving a child from that affair. And living a life deceiving her family while maintaining her love for her son. Even if you say that, I can't accept it. So, your affair partner was type A? Why would you hide such important information? My husband, eyes reddened and about to cry, stood up to confront her. Perhaps. After murmuring that, Susan remained silent, looking down. What an incredible turn of events. A long-kept secret of Susan was uncovered through my daughter's blood type. Was it fate's cruelty or divine punishment? At least Mia was undoubtedly our child, so my role was minimal. I decided to watch the unfolding scene anxiously. Can this even be real? I've never had my blood type tested since I was always healthy from childhood. I had no need. I had to take mom's word for it when she said she was type O. I truly am sorry. At that moment, the door to the room quietly opened. I've heard the conversation. 
There stood my father-in-law, Steve, his face transformed into a mask of cold fury. Surpassing mere anger. He, too, had recommended that I stay with them, but due to Susan's radical behavior, I had not had much to do with him. The face that was always worried about the future of his business now displayed disappointment towards his wife who had kept her affair a secret. Is it true that Nathan is not our child? Steve asked in a low voice. Oh, you. You were listening? Caught off guard by the conversation being overheard, Susan started to panic. While she was scrambling for excuses, Steve found the test results and stared at them intently. You had an illicit relationship with another man. And you've been deceiving me all these years. His mask of calmness shattered instantly, turning red with rage as he yelled at Susan. I didn't deceive you in such a manner. Nathan is our precious son. Haven't we raised him with care all this time? Yes, indeed. Deceived by you? I've been raising another man's child as my own for 30 years. With a loud bang, Steve slammed the test results onto the table, startling both my husband and me. Unable to withstand Steve's fury, Susan stood up to retaliate. What's the use of getting angry now? I haven't been in contact with that man for 30 years. It should be expired by now, shouldn't it? Expired? I never imagined you could be such an irresponsible woman. And the evidence of your infidelity is still standing right there. Pointing at my husband, he screamed. Caught in the middle of his parents' argument, my husband was stunned. Now that this has come to light, I'm ending our marriage. Divorce. And you, Nathan. If you're not my son, don't ever cross our threshold again. Wait, this can't be happening. As the parents continued to argue, my husband was kicked out of the house. Feeling left out, I too left with him, and we ended up discussing divorce at a diner. I understand now that you weren't cheating. It was all a misunderstanding. Mia is indeed our child, so I'm calling off the divorce. We can live in that house again. Typical of my opportunistic husband. His convenient proposal was surprising. I responded flatly. No way. Even though the misunderstanding is cleared. Words once spoken can't be taken back. What you said to me was too harsh. I can't forgive you for insulting Mia and me. I cannot stay married to someone who speaks so carelessly. We'll proceed with the divorce. Wait, don't say it like that. To my husband, who was frantically trying to stop me, I responded with a cold smile. You must be relieved to be rid of a wife who won't live with your parents or quit her job. Initially, you supported me, but gradually you sided with your mother. I don't need a husband who won't stand by me. Let's settle the rest through lawyers. Goodbye. I quickly stood up and left my husband alone amidst the bustling diner families. By the time I was on the train back to pick up my daughter waiting at my parents' house. My husband had returned to his parents' home but, as his father had said, was not allowed in. Naturally, he was also fired from the family business. And the message about the inheritance being revoked arrived. I ignored the message and immediately searched. For a lawyer to proceed with the claim for compensation. My husband's actions were considered mental harassment, allowing me to claim $20,000 in damages. After receiving the demand letter, my husband complained about his inability to pay due to the lack of work, but I stood firm on not lowering the amount. My husband had been complacent about becoming the company president one day and had not saved any money, spending all his earnings on alcohol and gambling. Moreover, maintaining the apartment we lived in together would likely be impossible. Meanwhile, Susan, exposed for her infidelity and facing a late-life divorce at 60, managed to contact her past affair partner and sought refuge with him.
Nathan contacted Susan, and together, they planned to join the biological father, who was the affair partner, at his home. After not seeing each other for 30 years, the affair partner was taken aback and greatly confused when the woman from the past and her unexpected son suddenly showed up. He claimed not to remember such old affairs, suggesting it might be a misunderstanding and attempted to escape the situation. Susan managed to hold him and demanded a DNA test, insisting on covering the costs. Their argument at the doorstep was discovered by his wife, who lived in the same house, leading to a confrontation among the three. Turns out, Susan's affair partner had been married at that time, 30 years ago. And now his infidelity was revealed to his wife. Leading to a divorce threat and a heated argument in front of Susan and Nathan. After me and my husband's fight, it was Susan and Steve's turn. And then the affair partner and his wife. It was a series of conflicts leading to a chaotic situation. During this time, I rented a new place near my parents' home and started living there with my daughter. Not wanting to return to the apartment I shared with my husband or rely on my parents forever. My mother encouraged me. Your husband and his family were odd. Divorcing was the right decision. From now on, let's raise Mia together with care. Having my mother's occasional help was a huge relief. I apologized to my company for the leave, explained my situation as much as possible, and requested a transfer to a location that was commutable from my new home. Thanks to my work performance, my transfer was approved despite regrets about me leaving the headquarters, allowing me to return to work successfully. Just as I was starting a new life, my mother arrived at my house with an angry expression. Can you listen for a moment? It seemed she wasn't angry with me, so I let her in to hear her out. Your ex-husband, of all people, came to our house. I just can't believe it. Sipping the coffee I served, she expressed her frustration. I felt uncomfortable about the inconvenience caused to my parents by his shamelessness. He's jobless and can't pay child support, so he came begging for help. When I told him you had started a new life, he became pale and even dared to ask us for money. I chased him away immediately. After venting, my mother seemed relieved and finished her coffee. I'm sorry for causing you trouble, mom. Mother reassured me with a warm smile. It's all right. It's over now. I told him I'd call the police if he comes again. Don't worry about it and focus on you and Mia. Saying that, my mother patted my shoulder with a thumb. Touched by my mother's support, I couldn't help but feel emotional. Interestingly, my mother is genuinely type O. Soon after, I received daily messages and voicemails from Nathan. It seems that Nathan, Susan, and her affair partner, all kicked out of their respective homes have started living together, an odd mix matched by circumstance. When I heard about this arrangement, I couldn't help but laugh at the bizarre combination. However, it's hard to imagine that those who caused such turmoil could live together cooperatively. As expected, it appears they aren't getting along with anyone. And then they turn to me for help. After my mother even went as far as to sprinkle salt to ward them off, the audacity of it all. I ignored everything, blocking all their accounts and phone numbers. His insistence didn't stop there, he even showed up at my new workplace. However, he never got to confront me. After discussing his harassment with my company, they were prepared. As soon as the surveillance camera spotted him, an alarm sounded. And he fled from the security personnel. Witnessing this, my colleagues sympathized with me and promised to keep him away. Shortly after, another person visited my company. Incredibly, it was Susan, who should have had nothing to do with me anymore. Worse still, she caught me in the hallway during my lunch break when I was away from my office. I finally found you. I need you to take responsibility for what happened once and for all. 
Her voice echoed down the office hallway, as passers-by employees looked on worriedly. Seeing an outsider angrily confronting me. What? Why are you here all of a sudden? Why come to my workplace? As I stood bewildered, she, looking considerably more haggard and paler than before, began to shriek in a shrill voice. It's obvious. If you hadn't decided to check the blood types. If you hadn't requested a DNA test, none of this would have happened. You've ruined everything I built up over the years. It's all a mess now. Despite her being the one who had the affair and kept silent about her child's true parentage for over 30 years. She was trying to shift the blame onto me. Just as she attempted to grab me, security staff intervened and restrained her, leading to a commotion that involved the police being called. Strangely, Nathan was also there, watching from the shadows, and it seemed they both ended up being questioned by the police together. I sincerely wished for an end to all this. My new life had begun, and my divorce from my ex-husband was finalized, severing all ties. All I wanted was to lead a peaceful life, and as I returned home with that thought, the next day was a repeat of the previous day's events. But this time it was Steve waiting in the hallway. How he found my workplace was a mystery to me. Despite the eerie feeling, when I faced him, he said, well, I know we've caused a lot of trouble in the past. Now that my wife and son are gone, we're short on hands. Even though you're divorced, you were once part of the family. So how about helping out as an employee? Please don't be unreasonable. I'm the ex-wife of your estranged son. We have no relation now. If this is about headhunting, please look elsewhere. When I calmly declined, Steve's smirk turned into a sharp glare as he aggressively confronted me. Oh? Talking back, are you? When you were married to my son. It was all, I won't quit my job, I won't live together, just as you pleased. Now that you've cut ties with my son and wife, I'm offering you a fresh start. And you're turning it down? Modern women, all so insolent, it's infuriating. As he caused a scene, security and the police arrived just like they did with Susan. And he was taken away. Finally, after the visits from these three family members, my colleagues, who worried for me greatly, saw the end of the disruptions, allowing me to hopefully focus on my work in peace. Afterwards, Steve tried to use the same, you were once part of the family, logic on Nathan and Susan, attempting to salvage the labor shortage in his business. Both Nathan and Susan, desperate for a place to live and money, reluctantly agreed to help out, given their circumstances. But, a family that had been so embroiled in lies and betrayal was unlikely to suddenly function well together. Unsurprisingly, both their home life and business were unsuccessful leading to constant loud arguments that alienated them from the community. Nevertheless, I made sure to collect the compensation payments through my lawyer, sending reminders whenever payments ceased. It seems Nathan, engulfed in this vicious cycle, had to borrow money just to make ends meet, further worsening his financial struggles as he continued to work under his father for minimal pay. On the other hand, my life is very much on the upswing. With the expertise I developed at the headquarters, I'm valued in my new workplace. I've been praised for my quick and accurate work and have already gained the trust of those around me. Talks of promotions and further advancements are already underway, indicating that even more is expected of me than before. The people here are calm and cheerful, making me want to continue working in this environment for a long time. Parenting is also going smoothly. I entrust Mia to daycare during the day and sometimes rely on my mother's help. And Mia has been growing rapidly. Regular visits to the doctor have gradually improved her eczema, bringing some peace of mind. Every day, the way she earnestly shares stories from daycare is irresistibly adorable. 
Mia's third birthday is already approaching. And my mother and I are brainstorming how to celebrate it. Even though she's still young and may not remember. I want to give her a lovely and charming celebration. My mother has been diligently knitting a sweater for her, promising. I'll make the cutest sweater in the world, so look forward to it. She showed her enthusiasm right in front of me. Meanwhile, I've started baking. Preparing daily snacks while also planning to make her birthday cake from scratch. Strawberry cake is nice, but apple pie could be good too. What do you think, Mia? When asked, my little daughter tilted her head slightly before exclaiming. Apple pie. Her adorable response made me smile uncontrollably. Life may bring its challenges, but with work, parenting, and the support of those around me. I aim to tackle each day with a smile, taking everything one step at a time. With this child by my side, I'm sure everything will be alright.